Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. In this video, I'm going to take a look at a few phrases from a Mike Stern solo, uh, from his solo on the song There's No Greater Love, which he recorded on his Jazz Standards album, I think in 92, somewhere in the 90s at least. He plays it as a trio with uh, Al Foster on drums and Jay Anderson on bass. I think it's a really great example of his playing and how he works with uh, soloing over changing harmony like this. And the examples that I'm going to go over, I think also really showcase some of the things that are really typical for the kind of lines that he plays and some of the melodic ideas that he uses very often. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo and check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. The first part of this phrase is a really good example of how Stern will very often use also some straight ahead blues and rock licks and then mix that with his bob lines. And this is something he does quite often. Uh, in this case, the song is in B flat major. Uh, so it makes sense that he's also just using B flat minor pentatonic or B flat blues for really. this kind of sound on top of it. Uh, he comes out on the B flat on the one and then up to the flat three. And then from here we get this phrase, which is just a fairly common uh, blues phrase. Nothing too special about it, except of course that it's put in the context of a, of a jazz standard. So in that way, it's, it's a little bit different. From here, he really returns to just really playing the changes and playing more bob phrases. The first part on the G7 in, in bar four, the example, it's just a scale melody, but also really bringing out the sound of the chords of the, the G7. Uh, from here, continuing with an encircling of the root, he plays this line, which is just really a C minor seven arpeggio. upper structure of that. So really this whole thing is just coming out of sort of a C minor 11 sound here with the leading note. And here he moves on to two bars of F7 and he's using the diminished scale on the F7. This is also something that's quite typical and another thing that's uh, also something that I find that he does quite often is that he's really using the diminished arpeggio uh, to get the diminished sound across. So first part of it is really coming up to the flat nine to really emphasize that now it's an F7 flat nine. So using the F as a pedal now, so. And then in that way on one string, really just going up to the A here, again, just a strong chord, chord tone on F7. And then a sequence of uh, diminished patios. So first this and then the inversion. Repeated F again, sort of a blues idea, I guess. When listening to Stern improvising, I think you will try, kind of notice that he very often accents on the heavy beats. So in this case, he's doing that as well on the F7. So you really get an, an, a strong accent on the on the G flat here, and actually also on the A flat. So it's more the the beat that's accented than the offbeat, uh, in at least in these kind of phrases. And that's also the case with uh, the two diminished arpeggios, so. But here he's turned them around, so they're placed in the bar so that they're on beginning on the uh, four and on the two. And in that way, he's sort of changing it up a little bit, but still sticking with the accents on the beat. first example on the F7, we had sort of an F pedal point within the line. So we had the, this F staying sort of and coming back. And that's also what's happening in this second example. But now the pedal point is the highest note and what he's playing under it is chords. So this whole uh, phrase is on the bridge and he's coming out after having played uh, a longer period of, of dotted quarter notes or uh, superimposed a uh, 3-4 on top of the 4-4 the four, four meter here. That's also loosely what he's doing with the pattern that he's playing. First, he's before this example, he's just playing it with chords. And here he starts using the pedal point, but still 
accenting uh, every third beat, uh, well at least loosely, uh, um, with, with chords. This is on the bridge of the song and that's a few turnarounds in G minor. So the pedal point that he's using is a high D, so this note. And then he's using different chords on it. It's, I would say it's related to, um, to the chords of the bridge, but he's not strictly following them. And he's focusing more on just having some accents in the right place. And that's then playing almost like a continuous eight note pattern with a D. And then every third beat adding different chords to, to give an accent. And then the chords that he's using, so we kind of have three chords in the first part of the bridge, which would be like A half diminished, D7 to G minor. And uh, he's using this for the A half diminished, this diminished voicing for, uh, for the D7, and then a G minor 7 like this. And then he's a bit loose with how he's actually relating it to the chords. So the first bar is just first this chord coming out of the dotted quarter notes, then the D, and then he actually goes to the D7 where we would normally have a G minor. So, and then just keeping the high D uh, moving, going into the A half diminished again. This accent is a D7, and then G minor 7, A half diminished, D7. Minor seven, and then for the last two bars of the bridge, we have a cadence going back to the A part, and uh, that's of course in B flat. So then it makes more sense to have a higher pedal point, which is the F, which is also what he moves to. And then he uses first this for C seven or for C minor seven, and then moving to this diminished voicing for F seven. So essentially, this is a uh, well. In this case, that would be like a. D, an F7 with a flat 9, a sharp 11, and then the 5th also. And then he's mo moving that up and using the same type of voicing to resolve it. So he's really coming out on this quite dissonant B flat 7 on the last A part. The main reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that I have a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. And if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. Pretty much any solo that you listen to from Mike Stern, you'll hear him move around phrases and take some pattern and treat it as a motif, and that's something he does quite often. And this next example is really showing that. And it's also how he's sometimes kind of moving, taking a, a motif and then changing the chords so that he can move the motif around in an easier way, but in that way have something that sort of moves inside and outside on top of the changes. So what he does here is for the first part is just coming out on the B flat. And then the first triad that he's playing, these are all uh, this is starting as triad based and then it's moving into something else along the way also just through some voice leading it's it's a uh, it's in that way pretty elegant what is going on i think and uh, the first part is just a b flat major triad second inversion moving into the an a major triad so he's using the a major triad on top of the e flat seven making that sort of an alter sound then of course we get an a flat major triad on the a flat seven so that's Quite simple. G7 also is just a G uh, major triad. And then moving on to the C7. So here we first get a G flat, again a tritone substitution. So, And then he starts to move into another sound completely just to actually end up where he probably wants to end up. And then he moves into this, which is sort of a G major triad with an added uh, sharp form on top of the C7. And that chord doesn't really have serve any purpose except that it needs to resolve uh, on the next chord, which it also does. So that comes along twice. Uh, and then moves into this A flat, uh, sorry, E flat major seven. And that's a little bit like just splitting up the chord. 
so that it moves in, in different directions if you were to see it as a, as a voice leading which is I think kind of how, how the thinking is here so first the E flat major 7 then an F7 which is in this case played as an A diminished triad then a G minor 7 triad uh, G minor 7 arpeggio start triad and then an A half diminished so that's really just walking up the scale and then ending on the high A, so the major 7 on the B flat major 7. With this example, I think that Mike Stern is actually playing these patterns just with all alternate picking. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, the way I play it is actually that I'm playing it with an economy picking. So I'll play the first note with a downstroke and then the rest with upstrokes. I find that really easy to, to get to sound as a sort of cascading arpeggio effect and that works better with the, the way I want it to sound. Uh, another thing that I also maybe don't talk about in the explanation of this lick is that there are a few notes that are uh, different from the triads along the way, I think it's twice. And uh, he does play those notes and it sounds like that, but I actually think that there are more or less mistakes or that they are uh, just side effects of playing this at a high tempo and not so much something that's really a part of the, li the lick. <laughs> If you want to check out another video that I did on Mike Stern's old teacher, Pat Metheny, and discussing how he plays melodic solos and why that is, then check out this video. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and this is the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. And if you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.